This is a big year for TVs, and I'm feeling confident that the best of 2022 isn't too hard to figure out, even early in the year. So let's get into it. So a lot of excitement about 2022 TVs. You have Hisense and Sony getting into mini LED TVs, Samsung into OLEDs, crazy times. But what will you target this year? Will it be a bigger TV for less or a new technology like QD or mini LED? I'm gonna go over the tech and what I think will be the hot buys and best TVs of 2022. And if you're new here to the channel or just been putting it off, please make sure to subscribe and set the notification bell to all. I'm right around 100K mark and I always appreciate the continued support as we get into a brand new year of TVs and installations. And when you're down there or in the comments, please smash the like button and let me know what will be the best TV of 2022. So it's early and I haven't seen all these TVs, but at CES, I did get a look at the QD OLED and different iterations of mini LEDs depending on the company. And I've seen a lot of OLEDs over the past few years. So as a TV reviewer, it's not rocket science to start to think of what TVs you will be most likely to consider the best TVs of the year. And in order to get an early winner, I need to first look over the new LED or mini LED TVs and then OLED and then overall top prediction. Companies like Samsung and TCL are bringing their second and even third generation mini LEDs to this year and both look quite promising. For TCL, this is the third year with the technology and it's getting better. And while the six series has been a great combination of quality and price, the new 4K eight series TCL looked incredible at CES. Bright and vibrant with no noticeable blooming straight on or off angle. It looked as good as any QLED I've seen to date. Rumored to have thousands of dimming zones and 144 Hertz panel with new gaming features. This will be in that top tier of QLEDs, likely with the most competitive pricing of the major brands. Then you have Samsung who arguably had the best overall LED TV with last year's QN90A's black levels being so close to OLED while still having great HDR and amazing full screen brightness and the anti-reflective capabilities. And with Samsung looking to keep that darkroom performance with better control of bright highlights, adding more gaming features, improved OS with that split screen or picture in picture, and the nice and sleek solar remote, the QN90B will be a serious contender for best overall 4K TV, period, in 2022, let alone for best mini LED TV. The one thing that continues to hold me back from personally owning a Samsung is a screen uniformity. Having a dirty screen on a brand new TV is something I can't get used to and I'm hoping Samsung addresses it in 2022. But the mini LED TV that I have not seen and I don't know if it'll be best or second best but is extremely interesting to me is the Sony X95K. Sony had a pretty solid LED TV last year in the X95J which was not mini LED and only had 60 local dimming zones in a 65 inch TV which made using the TV in a dark room fine for most but less than ideal for a trained eye. And without many LEDs and only minimal dimming zones, the X95J was still pretty high on the list in 2021 as far as flagship TVs. And I would say that it only had a couple struggles, which one was that darker performance where you could see some blooming, especially off angle, and the other being the black uniformity of the panel wasn't great either, where you'd turn it to black and some of the lights would turn on and off at different times, making it look a little weird. But the color of the TV and the quality in general was still pretty much top two in LED with the QN90 from Samsung. So in 2022, Sony looks to be getting up to speed with their own flagship mini LED TV in the X95K. But the implementation of mini LEDs is just one part or at least one aspect to the overall improvement of this TV. The other side of that coin is the increased dimming zone count that this TV will have and that it will all be powered with the Sony XR Backlight Master Drive to control the panel's dimming algorithm. So I can't predict exactly how it's going to look, but I have a lot of anticipation that these three features in mini LED, more dimming zones, and the back light master drive should immediately make it a front runner for TV of the year. And I know that the 8K TVs from TCL, Sony, and Samsung will be hot buys, not just because of the 8K ability, but because of their look and tech improvements. But if we're talking 4K, these three models should be at the top, all with new features and in running for the best TV of the year. For me, LG is OLED or bust. Before I ever reviewed a TV, I'd already had this opinion. And the fact that LG will charge a solid premium for mini LED TVs while using IPS panels that have a ton of light bleeding straight on or even off angle make it really hard to recommend. This year LG is really trying to improve the QNED lineup with better processing and of course top of the line gaming specs on most of their TVs but I remain skeptical that I will find LG's LED TVs 
more impressive or a better value than the other three brands I mentioned. And Hisense has been pretty solid for QLED TVs without mini LEDs, but more of a budget option. Pretty decent all around TVs that are typically brighter than the competition in the same price point, but not quite as good at controlling motion and processing. In 2022, both the top U8H and U9H models will have mini LEDs and what looked like VA panels at CES as it was not extreme IPS type blooming from angles like I spoke about for the LG. But can they compete in all categories with the Samsung and Sony's of the world in motion and color accuracy? We shall see. But for the price, it's hard to argue against a better value. So as far as LED based TVs, what do you think will be the top choice? The new Sony X95K with the backlight master drive or the Samsung QN90B with the second generation mini LED and history of power for LED TVs? Or will it be the 8 series TCL? Let me know in the comments below. First, a quick word from our sponsor, Manscaped. Pay attention and your balls will thank you. Ever get into a hairy situation? Whether it's trimming your nose or ear hair or shining up the peaches, Manscaped.com has you fully covered with their man grooming products. I highly recommend the Performance Package 4.0 where you get the free anti-chafing boxers and the Shed Travel Bag as free gifts along with the Lawnmower 4.0 hair trimmer, weed whacker for nose and ear hair, crop preserver, reviver, and the magic mat to catch all the collateral damage. And at the very least, I found mowing the lawn to be a very relaxing activity. Look down below and tell me you don't need some help. No, I mean in the description. Find the links and go to manscaped.com and use the promo code installer to get an extra 20% off across the website with free shipping and a 30-day return policy. Manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. So then that brings me to the whole new world of OLED TVs in 2022. First, let's talk about the traditional W OLED TVs. The LG OLED lineup is very exciting with five new models with new sizes that weren't available in 2021. The LG C2 with the traditional stand that now swivels and the the LG G2 Gallery Series will have the same great Evo panel technology that the LG G1 had last year. LG is saying that it's not just about a particular panel, but a combo of panel, processing, and the algorithm. But in addition to the Evo technology that the C1 did not have in 2021, the C2 will also have the brightness booster of an unknown amount. So in theory, the LG C2 would be brighter than the LG G1 of 2021 and now has to be considered at the very top of the TV world because that C series was already the most popular OLED available. And now with the fifth gen A9 processor and Evo panel and tech, improvements to the OS and the best gaming chops in the world, this is really great news for OLED fans around the world. In addition, they're offering a 42 inch LG C2 that will be a great choice for PC gaming. And then to take it to the next level, the very flush LG G2 gallery series TV, which will have all the same features, will be a dramatic lighter than the LG G1 of last year, which is great news because it was pretty heavy, and add to it a heat dissipation technology with the Brightness Booster Max. And if you were paying attention, the C2 just has the Brightness Booster, no Max, likely because it doesn't get the heat dissipation. And Brightness Booster versus Brightness Booster Max, we'll have to see the real world differences shortly, but all of that to say that LG OLEDs are poised to really give you much more in 2022 over last year models that were already pretty damn good. And then as I said before, I think the most exciting LG related TV upgrade is that they'll be offering the top LG 4K G2 OLED in both 83 and 97 inches. So unlike 2021, when the G1 was only available in the 77 inch model and didn't have a heat sink to push it past the Sony A90J, this year LG looks to have the most coveted W OLED in 2022 in massive sizes. But will that be enough to make it the top overall 4K TV? I mean, we can't just end on that note as they're about to launch the first ever Quantum Dot or QD OLED the Sony A95K. I saw the QD OLED at CES and it was very exciting. And even just a month ago, many of us thought that it would be priced outside of most budgets. And why not? It's a brand new way to see OLED with everything based off of blue light that is simply converted to red and green through a QD layer, making the panel more efficient and colorful. In person, whether the LG C1 below it was maxed out or not, the difference in the QD was very evident. Super white hot detail, amazing colors. And then you add to it Sony's top OLED features like the XR processor for upscaling, contrast enhancing, motion with the heat sink similar to the A90J in 2021 to keep that efficient and bright panel cooler and the same acoustic surface speakers that almost make having a soundbar irrelevant and you get a very intriguing product. And most importantly, of course, Sony has shrunk its metallic backlit remote to a more manageable size eliminating the number buttons that I've never used on my A90J and now offers two great ways to keep the A95K looking great on the TV stand. And think about this, at $8,000, I wasn't so stoked. I mean, that's crazy. 
But as it turns out, the 65 inch A95K QD OLED is rumored to be priced at the same $4,000 that the Sony A90J Master Series OLED initially was last year. And while that price is still quite high, it isn't 2X the cost of another OLED and is much more attainable for the regular consumer. So that price difference really has me wondering what will be the most sought after and best TV of 2022. Mini LED has a strong case this year. Could Samsung with the QN90B finally get both the black level and the highlights working to beat out OLED? Will TCL and the newest 8 series be able to compete at the same level? And will Sony joining the mini LED world with their backlight master drive and increased dimming zones make the X95K an immediate contender for best TV? Or is it still OLED and which kind? With both LG C2 and G2 adding features and brightness, do you think it's the year of LG's traditional OLED with the 42 inch monitor and huge 97 inch gallery series TVs? Or like me, are you now even more interested than ever for the QD OLED since it's likely to launch at half the price we thought it would. Personally, I think it comes down to size. If you're looking for the very best at 65 or 55 inch, that Sony A95K is likely a top choice. Expensive, but relative to the 2021 TV of the year in the A90J, it's the same price and likely better, but no 75 or 83 inch. So I do think that LG will be selling a ton of large OLEDs this year. The LG C1 at 83 inch is pretty awesome. And now you'll have your choice between the C2 and the G2 gallery styles at that size. And of course the 97 inch G2. And if you're concerned with the potential for burning on OLEDs, since it's a long-term purchase, I think Samsung's QN90B and Sony X95K will be top choices. I look forward to comparing both and giving my thoughts ahead. So what do you guys think? What's gonna be the best TV in 2022? I know you guys will wanna see them and the reviews, but most of you like myself will have your own opinions. So definitely let me know in the comments and make sure to smash the like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you guys can be notified when I upload a next video and go check out an installation video so you can be the installer.